Welcome back to AP World Simplified, and today we'll be discussing the Byzantine Empire and the contributions of the late Eastern Roman Empire to the post-classical world. Now, the name of the Byzantine Empire was actually attributed to them later uh, by historians because the Byzantines themselves actually re continued to refer to themselves as Romans all the way from the split of the Roman Empire in 330 AD or CE by Constantine to the, the uh, capture of Constantinople, their capital, uh, by the Ottoman Turks in 1453 CE. Now, the Western Empire in Rome would fall to Germanic invaders in 485 CE. However, the East would survive this uh, fragmentation and fall of Rome and continue for another almost a thousand years uh, beyond that point. Now, once again, what's important to note here is they refer to themselves as Romans, despite the fact that the administration and centers for the state were actually Greek. Uh, in fact, in the 6th and 7th century CE, they would actually officially adopt Greek militaristic and linguistic policies. However, they would continue to refer to themselves as Romans and the Roman Empire uh, all the way until their demise in 1453. Additionally, not long after the Eastern Empire had started after 330 CE, the religion of Christianity would be made officially the state religion of the entire Roman Empire, including the East, uh, with the Edict of Thessalonica in the late 4th century CE. That would continue all the way through the existence of the Byzantine Empire, uh, even through the split of the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches, which I'll discuss later in this video. Politically and militaristically, however, the Byzantine Empire, particularly the first half of their reign, uh, were a force to be reckoned with in the Eastern Mediterranean and Western regions of Asia. Uh, just uh, in the 6th century would reconquer most of the Western Empire, uh, that was Rome, um, re-establishing uh, the Roman Empire to its maximum extent, uh, which it would hold for roughly 200 more years uh, before invaders and barbarians would once again sort of dismantle um, and break apart the Western half. However, the East would maintain itself uh, throughout most all of the um, post-classical era. Now, the Byzantine Empire saw several dips and resurgences in political and militaristic strength. Uh, one of the first dips in militaristic power came during the 7th century CE, when in conflict with the Persian Sassanid Empire, while the Byzantine Empire was victorious in the series of conflicts, both the Sassanid Persians and the Byzantine Empire uh, depleted their militaristic and economic resources substantially and left them very vulnerable uh, to the invading uh, Islamic era or Muslim Arabs that would come out of the Arabian Peninsula. As a result, the Byzantine Empire uh, during the 7th and uh, 8th century CEs would lose a huge amount of their territory in what was Egypt uh, and Levant, which also happened to be their most economically profitable regions. This proved only a temporary setback, however, as in the 10th and 11th century CE, there was a period known as the Macedonian Renaissance, where the state of Macedonia reasserted itself, uh, much like the times of Alexander the Great, uh, as a powerful state within the Byzantine Empire and propelled a series of reconquests uh, going into Anatolia uh, and areas in the Middle East to reconquer uh, a good chunk of what the Byzantine Empire had lost before to the Arabs. However, by the 13th century CE, defeat at the hands of the Seljuk Turks from Central Asia uh, would reduce uh, the Byzantine Empire and push them back out of or to the fringes of Anatolia, which is modern-day Turkey, and they would continue to exist for the next 200 years, but not so much as a powerful empire, but rather just a particularly prominent state, uh, all the way until they are going to be invaded and Constantinople sacked by the first uh, Christians in the Fourth Crusade, and then later by the Ottoman Empire, thus ending the uh, Byzantine Empire in 1453. Politically, the Byzantines also preserved Roman law, uh, one example of that being the Code of Justinian from the 4th and 5th century CE, and those would be a set of laws that would profoundly influence uh, the Western law and systems uh, going into the uh, modern and early modern eras. Now, these Roman laws emphasized common and civic law that applied to all peoples uh, and started the beginnings of this lens through which we now see society as uh, even across the board, as in not favoring those in higher positions in government. It also, at least in the West, began law as a professional and legal system in and of itself that one would train and prepare for, and also, also established abstract concepts such as the beginnings of what would be individual and natural rights, uh, equality, as well as concepts such as contracts which are enforceable by the state, uh, corporations, and other legal entities that don't exist on them their own but are rather legal constructs. Economically, the Byzantine Empire would play a vital role in post-classical economics, acting as a gateway from the 
empires of East and South Asia going forward towards the North African and European empires as well. This was particularly true in the city of Antioch while under Byzantine control in Syria in the first half of the post-classical era. That would bring a lot of goods from the East and spread them out into the Mediterranean Sea trade network uh, going into North Africa and Europe. Now, while their economic role would diminish as time went on in the post-classical era, they were still influential in establishing trade uh, between the East and West, as well as with the Vikings and Kievan Rus to the North, bringing goods uh, from the North down into the Southern uh, parts of West Asia and uh, East Africa. And the last portion on the Byzantine Empire is their influence on religion, particularly in Christianity. As in 1054, we had an event known as the Great Schism or the East-West Schism, in which the Roman Catholic Church officially broke away uh, or I should say actually the Eastern Orthodox Church officially broke away from the Roman Catholic Church based in Rome. Now this Eastern Orthodox Church would be based in Constantinople, and while initially they would attempt a form of rule known as Caesaropapism, where the emperor acts as both the political and theological leader, uh, there were some logical inconsistencies in that it is very difficult to maintain a uh, strong monarchical position while also maintaining a particularly Christian uh, theological emphasis on kindness and forgiveness. Following Caesaropapism, however, they would establish a pope-like entity in the Patriarch based in Constantinople. A large cathedral will be constructed known as the Hagia Sophia, which is now a mosque, and the structure and hierarchy of this Eastern Orthodox Church would very much mimic that of the Roman Catholic Church, with the equivalents being at the top, the Patriarch being much like the uh, Pope in, in Rome, as well as having a uh, descending order of bishops, uh, priests, and other laity, much like the Catholic Church had over there in Rome. Now, the Eastern Orthodox Church was quick to send out missionaries, such as Cyril Methodius, that con converted large portions of Eastern Europe, mostly in the Slavic regions, uh, in what is now uh, Bulgaria, uh, in the areas of the Balkans, as well as the areas of Russia, Ukraine, and others. And that would allow Eastern Orthodox uh, beliefs to firmly establish themselves within South and Eastern Europe, while Catholicism would continue in Western, Central, and Northern Europe until the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century CE.